guys so much for joining me on this live today first time going live in a couple of weeks thank you guys so much for you know being so patient while we get our live act back together so today is the actually the start of a brand new series that we're going to be doing on um the anderson's channel and it's actually acts a canadian immigrant and what we're going to be doing we're going to be comparing um the different provinces in terms of what province should a new immigrant migrate to right now this is a question that a lot of persons are always asking in terms of um what province do you think is best for me to migrate to and why right so we're going to be getting into um a lot by asking um different persons on the platform every sunday we're going to be talking to persons from different provinces international student permanent residents um it doesn't matter the immigration status but just to get an idea of what was transitioning like for them in their respective province but today i'm just going to be doing um a one-on-one -on -one with you guys just to introduce the series but most importantly to talk about my knowledge of the different provinces so that all of you guys can have an idea of what province is best for you guys to migrate to, right? So I'm definitely sure that if you're watching this live, it means that you're interested in migrating to Canada. And if that's the case, definitely smash a like on the live stream as soon as you come into the live. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. And definitely, definitely, definitely interact with me through the chat. It's usually an interactive session between you and I where we definitely share our knowledge. But most importantly, we build a community, right? Now, if you're new here, what you get here is Canadian content. I am a Jamaican who migrated to Canada with my family in 2019. I came to Canada as an international student living in the beautiful city of Grand Prairie, Alberta, which is located five and a half hours north of Edmonton in the province of Alberta, right? Now, I chose to come to Grand Prairie at the time because Nats, who's my wife, has family here in Grand Prairie, and that's how I became um, aware of Grand Prairie because before then, I had no idea that somewhere like this existed, but it was easily one of the best decisions that I have made, and right now, I represent for Grand Prairie, all right? So you, you shout out to everybody who's taking a time out of their Sunday to spend it with me. I really, really appreciate it, and I hope you guys are doing fantastic. Fantastic. All right. So let's go into the chat quickly. Sherry Stennett, thank you so much. Hello, happy Sunday. I see Nikisha Dawson. And I also see lovely Tango. Thank you so much. Um, Don Botmeyer is coming in as well. I'm just giving everybody a few minutes to come into the live stream because I don't want to, you know, talk about the same thing repeatedly. Now, it's very important to note, guys, that usually um, my lives go for anywhere between one and a half hours to two hours. But the lives are going to be now restricted to just one hour. So we're going to be spending one hour each Sunday. And as I said, it's the introduction of the series, Ask a Canadian Immigrant, where we compare the different provinces so that persons who are thinking of migrating to Canada can have an idea of what the provinces have to offer, all right? Please feel free to throw whatever questions you have in the chat box. Like the live stream as soon as you come in, all right, guys? I really, really appreciate it. I see um, some flags dropping. I really, um, I'm always interested to know where you guys are watching from. So don't hesitate to drop your flag down into the chat box, right? Let me know where you guys are watching from. Really, really always interested to know that, all right? You shout out to Salona Joseph. Um, big up, big up, big up, big up every single time. Alia, hey, hi, Alia. I see Melissa Wright Thomas, big up them, big up Conroy who enjoy your content, my kids too. Big up Conroy, big up the family. I see Colleen, hi everyone, Jennifer Beckford watching from... Okay, blessings, blessings, blessings. I don't know what flag that is, but big up. <laughs> um, I see Diana Adams, hi everyone. Happy Sunday, guys. Ella says, what do you think about living in medicine art? We're going to get to all of that. Wayne James says, hey Dems, hey Wayne, what's up bro? Happy to have the live back. Thanks, Dems. Always a pleasure to see you, Saloni. Brittany Gill says, watching from the Bahamas, Ireland. Lol, Ireland. <laughs> yeah, um, my flag knowledge is not the best, to be honest, but definitely a lot of room for improvement there. I see the Bahamas. Blessings, blessings, blessings to all the Caribbean natives, all the persons who are watching from the different Caribbean islands. Big up the Jamaicans, of course, in the building. That's my country of birth. That's where I rep 100%. I would love to know about Fort McMurray. We're going to be talking about the different provinces. And then, you know, if we have enough time, we can talk a little bit more about the cities in Alberta. Watching from Jamaica. Always a pleasure to see the Jamaicans, the Yardies. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Anyways, guys, let's get into it. So um, the reason why I decided to do this, um, this series is really so that persons can have an in-depth 
um, knowledge, of course, based on my own experience of what the different provinces have to offer in terms of the pros and the cons. Now, bear in mind, guys, that this is just strictly based on my own experience. I'm not an immigration consultant, lawyer, affiliate, and neither have I lived in all the provinces. All the information that I'm sharing right now is just based on my own experience and, of course, experience of others who have resided in the different provinces and have decided to share their story. Now, today is the only Sunday that I'm going to be sharing my experience only because going forward, I'm going to be getting different persons from the different provinces to actually come onto the platform and we're going to actually have a sit down, them and I, on the stream, and we're going to compare the different provinces in terms of Alberta versus Ontario. Alberta versus Manitoba, Alberta versus Saskatchewan, Alberta versus Nova Scotia, etc., etc., etc. So you guys can have a clear understanding of the pros and the cons, right? Now, I'm always ripping for Alberta, but that's just because that's where I am from. It doesn't mean that that's the only province that will give you some benefit, all right? Now, the first province I want to talk about is the province of Ontario. And I'm going to share what I know about Ontario, right? And, of course, feel free to interact in the chat. If you guys have a question as well, you guys can throw it out as well, right? So what I know about Ontario is Ontario is the most populated province in Canada. Now, it's also the most popular province in Canada. It's a province that has the capital city of Ottawa, and there's always a lot of opportunities in Ontario. Most or a lot of immigrants are generally um fascinated with moving to ontario because that's for for example the caribbean natives it's closer to home um so persons if you're gonna uproot your life persons usually kind of like to feel that connection it's multicultural so there is there it doesn't matter where you're from you're able to find your community and the transition then becomes a lot easier now but there's there's definitely a lot of cons to having so many people in one province and one of those cons is there's a lot of um, demand and supply. So the, the demand is always going to outweigh the supply. And that's generally across most um, sector and industries, not only in terms of job opportunities, but also in terms of housing, right? So Ontario, um, I'm talking about the province of Ontario. That's what we're talking about first. Now, um, because it's so populated, there's not enough housing available for every single migrant or immigrant who goes there now i've heard persons who um go to ontario like of recent and they have to be living in an airbnb simply because they're they can't find housing and until a couple of months and if they do find housing it's so expensive right now bear in mind that ontario is a large province as well so i'm i don't want to generalize all of the province by just what is happening in the populated areas so you have areas like toronto um mississauga brampton um kingston hamilton um london all of these places are the most popular places in ontario and most of these places are what is populated however each province has rural towns rural cities that is not as populated as the urban areas that you guys would have known about so if it is that you are insistent on moving to a province like ontario i'll definitely suggest that you you know do you do some research do some research and choose a city that is not as populated as the major metropolitan areas that you guys would have become accustomed to, right? There's a lot of other cities that you can definitely um, benefit from. One of the things that you also have to understand as well is that as a new immigrant in Canada, healthcare is very important. Now, Alberta is one of those provinces that gives you access to provincial health immediately right so as soon as you land as a temporary resident meaning a, a foreign worker or an international student you can apply for alberta healthcare immediately no it's not the same in ontario in ontario there's a waiting period of at least three to six months where you have to live in the province for that period of time before you're eligible for provincial health it's very important to remember that guys now in terms of pr opportunities yeah. Guys, I'm not forsaking the chat. Best believe me, I'm not forsaking the chat. I just want to get through the content so that um, I don't get distracted, right? Because you know it is. Once I start talking to you guys, I don't even remember what I'm talking about. So just keep the chat coming. I definitely see it. <laughs> I definitely see the chat. Big up to everybody who's here. I really, really appreciate all of you guys, right? So, um, yeah. So 
each province has its own immigration stream, pilot programs, different different streams that you guys can you can use to become permanent resident or even to migrate to that particular province. Now, one of the things that you can you guys can look on is a provincial official website. So you can go on the Ontario um, immigration stream website and it shows you all the plat pathways that you can use to migrate to Ontario. So that's what I know about Ontario in terms of the populated areas, job opportunities are limited. Housing costs um, is very high. Um, housing um, accessibility is very limited. There's just simply not enough housing. But um, I'm being very careful to say that that is just in the populated areas. You have areas that are not as populated that you may be able to find a lot of opportunities as well. Take you to the grain of salt. All right. Now let's move on from Ontario and then let's move to which province? Let's talk about Saskatchewan. Now, Saskatchewan is located in, West, in, in Western Canada, and that's a province that not many people usually tend to want to go to for whatever reason, because um, it's just not one of the popular provinces, right? Now, of recently, Saskatchewan is becoming very popular, and that's simply because a lot of persons are becoming more aware of the, of the PR friendliness of the province, right? Now, it's one of the most um, underpopulated provinces in Canada. And because of that, a lot of new immigrants flock to Saskatchewan because they get PR relatively easy within Saskatchewan. Now, um, opportunities are definitely in Saskatchewan for um, new immigrants in terms of there's lots of job opportunities. I know a lot of persons who moved to Saskatchewan and was able to settle very you know, relatively easy. Housing is, is fairly accessible and fairly affordable as well, similar to Alberta. Um, the only thing I would say um, as a negative with Saskatchewan is the fact that it probably, because it's, because it's just becoming more um, populated and stuff like that, it's probably not as diverse as other parts of Canada. So you probably won't be able to find your immediate community. Now you'll find people from whatever race and, and sector you are in, but definitely it's not gonna be as as accessible as um, probably, sorry about that guys, it seemed like I kinda chipped out for a little bit. Now let's come back in. Now, um, childcare, a lot of persons who are in um, Saskatchewan find it difficult to find childcare immediately. And henceforth, a lot of persons are on the waiting list for an extended period of time to get their children into a daycare or a day home. And that can just simply be because there's not enough daycare providers, right? So that if you are going to Saskatchewan and you have children, you want to make sure that you, you know, plan ahead, definitely plan ahead and get your children or child on the wait list to make sure that when you transition, you're going to be able to um, have adequate childcare because that's going to be very important especially if it is that you're a single parent or even if you're a um, nuclear family and both persons are working, you're going to definitely need childcare, right? I'm going to run to the chat right now, guys. Sorry for forsaking you so much. Um, Diana says, love these stems. I hope you um, I hope you have persons from the Atlantic provinces. I'm going to be getting persons from all the provinces in Canada and territories to come on each week for one hour and just share their experience of transitioning in the respective province, right? So Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, um, Newfoundland and Labrador, all of the provinces, right? Definitely, definitely, definitely. You guys can rest assured. Every single week, somebody from a different province is going to come on. And we're going to talk about their province so that you guys can have a clear, clear, clear idea of what that province has to offer for you, right? Now, if you like the content, guys, don't hesitate to smash that like button. There's almost 50 of you guys here, but I only have 19 likes. Come on, run up those likes, guys, and definitely share the live so that other persons can see that the Andersons is live. Subscribe to the channel if you are not yet subscribed. I promise you guys big things are coming. Wayne James says, I'm in, is that Oxbury, Ontario, not so populated here. So there's an, there's an area that I didn't even know about, Oxbury. Bro, I've never heard of that place before. So, um, so that's somewhere, if it is that you're looking to go to Ontario, Oxbury is one of those places that you can consider, right? Now, we have Janel says, um, Joel Boland Taff says, Hi Dems, how are you and the family um, doing? Bless up from Jamaica. Bless up, bless up Janel every single time. Um, Jawel, sorry, Jawel. Sorry for butchering your name. Yeah, blessings every time. Colleen says hi, watching from, watching from Conception Bay South in Newfoundland. <laughs> but probably you can come on to the platform and tell us a little bit about Newfoundland. Probably one of these weeks. Basil, Dems, Ontario. 
Ha Basil, blessings, blessings, blessings. <laughs> Colleen says Atlantic in the house. Um Diana says hi Colleen representing for the Atlantic. And then we have Sharifa that says BC. And Tadingrad says, would love to hear about Manitoba. Yes, I would love to come and talk about Newfoundland. Exactly. So we're gonna so there we go. We have somebody who is, you know, available to talk about to talk about Manitoba already. Now let's talk about um to talk about Newfoundland, sorry. Jamaica in the house. Let's talk a little bit about um let's talk about BC. Now British Columbia. Now that's a that's a province that's also um in high demand, right? Now BC is in high demand because it has cities like Vancouver, Kelowna, all of these beautiful cities, and BC is one of those provinces that is usually considered a little bit warmer, right? Especially like Kelowna is usually usually referred to as the Caribbean of Canada because they don't get much snowfall and the weather is usually always on point, right? Now Vancouver is one of the popular cities in Canada. And just like just like any other provinces, you have a lot of towns and and cities in each provinces that we don't even know about, right? So if it is that you are thinking of going to BC, things to avoid primarily is Vancouver. <laughs> I say that because Vancouver is also very populated and housing prices are very expensive, based on persons who I know who live there, right? So definitely, 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 if you're looking to move to British Columbia. Look for places outside of Vancouver because probably then you'd be able to, um, you know, survive a little bit better. Now, there's a lot of small towns in BC. BC is a beautiful um, province. I almost said parish. BC is a very beautiful province, right? Um, it's one of the most beautiful provinces that I have been to. I've, I, I love BC, but I just wouldn't live there. And that's just because BC is very expensive right now bc um tax pays um higher tax than a lot of other provinces um and things are generally more expensive in in bc but if it is that you have a decent job or if both persons are working you are able to survive right bc also have a lot of pr opportunities from what i've come to realize um that persons can benefit from right and of course just like anywhere else British Columbia is becoming increasingly popular um, as a part of Western Canada, right? So it's no longer just um, the popular provinces that is getting all of the persons who are migrating, but provinces like Alberta, Saskatchewan, BC, Manitoba is definitely seeing its fair share of increase. So that's actually a very good, um, I'd say, indication. Now, somebody asked, what about, what about, sorry, now, sorry, um, BC is usually is usually referred to as Little Mumbai, <laughs> and I say that to say that a lot of Indian immigrants live in Surrey, BC, so much that even the signs are in Punjabi. The signs in Surrey, BC, are in Punjabi and English, so definitely um, consider that as well, right? Now, if it is that you're looking for diversity and inclusion. Take that into consideration that uh, you're going to Little Mumbai, right? That's what I heard about Sur BC. I've never been there, but I know quite a few persons who have been there and even persons who have lived there. So that's what I know about Sur BC. Now, guys, one of the provinces that I really, really, really want to talk about is Nova Scotia. And the reason why I wanted to talk about Nova Scotia is because um, Nova Scotia is a very attractive province, especially for international students. International students are usually drawn towards the usually lower tuition costs and the, the, the Atlantic provinces usually offer PR opportunities that is very, very, very good. Now, with all that being said, when you're moving to Nova Scotia, please know that it takes a lot of planning. It takes a lot of planning, more so because housing prices have skyrocketed in Nova Scotia. And what usually costs $1,200 for a two-bedroom, now is costing roughly $2,000 for a two-bedroom. I really don't know what is the reason for the increase, but it has increased drastically over the past two years. There are places in, in Nova Scotia, um, Cape Breton, for example, that there's not enough housing for international students. The college in Cape Breton is said to be accepting a lot more students 
than what the, the, the city or town of Cape Breton can filter in in terms of jobs and accommodation. So if it is that you're going to be moving to Nova Scotia, if, if you can connect with somebody who is already on the ground, who can help you find accommodation, help you transition, that will aid you very, very, very greatly, right? So definitely, definitely think about that. Now, going to Nova Scotia, there's a lot of benefits, right? But know that the low tuition cost is, is almost cut out by the expensive housing costs, right? So the expensive housing costs definitely outweigh or supplement or balance out the low tuition costs. So you pretty much have to see what is important to you. Am I going to pay the low school fee and then pay the expensive um, housing costs or vice versa as long as you have everything balanced you should be able to survive because as i said it's a very it's a very attractive province right now and a lot of immigrants are going to nova scotia and there's a lot of diversity that is being um it being included in nova scotia right job opportunities are there again guys there is populated areas and there is not so populated areas choose wisely right now the more popular um, cities in, in nova scotia will be dartmouth halifax um cape breton um places like those though the places that you usually hear about a lot those are the most popular places but you do have a lot of other um towns and cities in every provinces that you don't even hear about, right? For example, Grand Prairie. We have never heard of Grand Prairie before, but here I am living and, and educating the world about Grand Prairie, right? So there's a lot of these gems that exist in Canada. Please explore, right? New Brunswick is pretty similar to Nova Scotia. Only thing is, um, only thing that I haven't heard from New Brunswick is that, that, that exuberant housing price prices that exist in Nova Scotia, right? Now, no, New Brunswick is, as I use, I'm not gonna say there's not a lot of opportunities in New Brunswick, but New Brunswick is usually um, the back of the line in terms of the other things. Like for example, for years, New Brunswick has had the, minimum, the lowest minimum wage in all of Canada, right? So stuff like those, and now that Things are kind of like picking up in, in New Brunswick, but they're still a little bit behind the other provinces. But there's a lot of opportunities, and sometimes you just get a foot um, in the door. Um, Western, um, not Western, Atlantic provinces are typically the same most of the time, right? Now, let's go to the chat. I think I've been forsaking you guys long enough. So, um, Tiana Murdoch says, yes, Nova Scotia, looking to move there. Nikki Shadasson says, this catch one was the first province I ever visited. Was was really good. Belinda says, watching from Zimbabwe. Blessings, blessings, blessings to all the persons who's watching from all around the world. Thank you guys so much for the love. Thank you guys so much for the support. Really appreciate it, guys. Now, if you're trying, if you're joining in late, guys, I'm just doing this live just to introduce a series that we're kicking off on our channel where we are comparing all the provinces so that persons can, you know, have an in-depth knowledge of what each province has to offer. I'm not going to sit here and say I know everything about all the provinces because I do not. And that is why I'm going to be getting persons from each province to come onto the platform every single week and talk about their province, right? They're going to talk about their province so that everybody can have an idea of job opportunities, housing prices, PR opportunities, um, transition, how did they transition, transportation, every single thing that, that, that would make somebody want to move to their province and would that somebody would want to know to in making a decision we're going to be talking about it right so this now i'm just touching base quickly on some provinces that i have some information my information probably is a little bit even sketchy because i don't live in those provinces right i live in the province of alberta and that's what i'm going to talk about next right before i get to that though guys i have 55 of you guys on the live stream i have 33 likes Run up that number, guys. Really appreciate it. Just take a second, click that like button. Really appreciate it. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, just hit that subscribe button. Really appreciate it, guys. Right? Um, how about Prince Edward Islands? I'm interested in Allen College. Now, I'm not going to lie. I don't know much about um, PEI, but I'm going to get somebody to come onto the channel and talk about it. All right? So stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that bell is on and make sure that you stay tuned every single Sunday. We're going to go live with at least one province every Sunday until we get all the provinces done. All right? Now, um, what am I going to talk about? Alberta. Now, Alberta. Alberta is a growing province. 
a lot of persons are seeing the benefit of Alberta. Now, I've been preaching this for the past two years. Since I started this platform, I've been preaching Alberta. I've been preaching Alberta, um, as you guys know. And a lot of persons, um, you know, they, they thought I was joking. And they thought that I probably was exaggerating. But now the world is seeing that Alberta is the best province to be. And more so, a lot of persons are migrating from other provinces to Alberta. And persons are migrating from outer Canada to Alberta. So just like anywhere else, when you have more persons, it drives the cost of housing, cost of living goes up, right? Now, the more populated area, the two most populated cities in Alberta is Edmonton and Calgary, right? Edmonton is the capital of Alberta, but Calgary is the most populated city in Alberta, right? Now, they are located just three hours apart. Now, the population of Calgary is roughly 1.3 million people, and the population of Edmonton is probably an approximate 1.2 million people. So it's pretty much the same ballpark, right, in that particular city. Now, you have many other cities in Alberta. Now, just like anywhere else, if you go to the populated areas, it might be more difficult for you to find affordable housing, good job opportunities, and, you know, flexibility. Now, there are some popular cities in Alberta that a lot of immigrants move to. One of those cities is Red Deer. Now, Red Deer is located right in the middle of Calgary and Edmonton. And Red Deer population just got just reached 100,000, making it the third largest city in Alberta. Red Deer is growing very quickly, guys. Red Deer is growing exponentially fast. And that is just because a lot of immigrants are moving to Red Deer because one and a half hour to Calgary, one and a half hour to Edmonton. So Red Deer is a fast growing, fast growing city. Great, great city. It's small town, but a big city vibe. I love Red Deer. The other city that I would recommend that you guys look into is Lethbridge. Now, Lethbridge is located on the other side of the province and very close to the U.S. border. Before Red Deer overtook um, Lethbridge, Lethbridge was the third largest city in Alberta, but now it's between it and Red Deer, who's third, who's fourth, right? Lethbridge is a very developed city, just the same. Um, great opportunities, population a little bit over 100,000, Great job, great job transferability, um, great housing pricing, wonderful. Like probably um, one and a half hour from the U.S. border, Lethbridge is a great, great, great city as well in Alberta that you guys can look into as well. So if it is that you're thinking of coming to Alberta, don't just look on Edmonton and Calgary. Now, the other city that you guys can look on is Grand Prairie. Of course, I'm going to talk about Grand Prairie. You didn't, of course, you guys expected that. Now, Grand Prairie population is roughly 70,000, and it's growing very, very quickly. Now, Grand Prairie is located four and a half hours north of Edmonton, and a lot of persons are moving to Grand Prairie. So because, um, of course, the job opportunities and all of these things, a lot of persons are flocking to Grand Prairie, and even a lot of international students are moving from other provinces like um, Ontario. Um, I've met some persons from Montreal, all of who is coming to Grand Prairie just to get jobs so that they can get permanent residence. So that's something like every day, every week, there's so many persons coming into the city, right? So many persons coming into the city, definitely. But the thing is, Grand Prairie is, is very north in the province, northern Alberta, right? So because of that, there's not enough access to, to like, culture. Like, Jamaican food and stuff like that. I find it difficult to find Jamaican food here. Um, Jamaican culture, you can't even find a nice party, right? Everything is more northern, right? So, yeah, the Great North, that's what Grand Prairie looks like. Um, diversity is not really... You have a lot of different cultures here, but diversity is something that is still being learned, if that makes sense. So, um, you have to kind of, like, prepare yourself for that and, you know, kind of understand that a little bit. I see the medicine art in the chat. I see it, I see it. I'm coming to it, I promise you. I promise you, I see it in all caps, I see it in small caps, I'm getting to medicine art. Now, yeah, moving from Grand Prairie, and I'm going to move on to Fort McMurray. 
Somebody asked me about Fort McMurray at the beginning of this life. Fort McMurray right now is the Grand Prairie back then. In terms of before Grand Prairie become, became as popular as it is right now, and a lot of persons are flocking to it, like there's so much jobs here and everything was like booming and like you can just walk in and get a job and stuff like that. That is Fort McMurray right now. The population of Fort McMurray is roughly 65,000 people. So it's not that small, right? It's pretty much the same size as Grand Prairie. But listen, there's so many job opportunities in Fort McMurray that if you guys go on the Canadian Job Bank right now, 90%. And guys, smash a like on the, on the live for this information that you're about to get. If you guys go on Canadian Job Bank, that GC, that CA, right now and put in Fort McMurray, 90% of the jobs you see is open to international candidates and you can apply to it and get even access to permanent residency immediately. Smash a like on the live for that, guys. Now, this is something that I have fact-checked, that I've done, that I've researched, and even persons who I know who is actually in the process right now of moving to Fort McMurray. So Fort McMurray is on the other side of the province than Grand Prairie, but it is booming. It is booming. Canadian Job Bank, Fort McMurray, and then see you in Canada, I promise you guys. Now let's talk about Medicine Hat, right? Now, there's this YouTube um, family that vlogs in Medicine Hat, very good friends of mine, um, Mike and Rihanna, right? Mike and Rihanna, um, they are from Medicine Hat, lived in Medicine Hat, grew up in Medicine Hat, share everything in Medicine Hat, and they show what Medicine Hat looks like. No, Medicine Hat is, I wouldn't live there. <laughs> I wouldn't live there because it's so remote. But at the end of the day, it's anywhere the opportunity is. Similar to other places in Alberta, Medicine Hat has a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of opportunities. There is even a college there. There's a college there that you can go to. And of course, it's, it's, uh, it's considered to be a part of the rural towns in Alberta because the population is less than 100,000. Any city that the population is less than 100,000 people is considered rural, especially in Alberta. And then because of that, they get access to an immigration stream in Alberta that's called the Rural Renewal Stream. If you can get an employer to give you a job offer who lives, who is a part of the Rural Renewal Stream, then you can use that to apply for permanent residency through the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program. So all you need is a job offer from an employer who is participating in the rural renewal stream. Medicine Hat is considered one of those rural towns. Fort McMurray is one of those rural towns. Grand Prairie is one of those rural towns. Well, Red Deer is not anymore because their population is past 100,000, but that generally you get the gist. Now, yeah, like Medicine Hat is good, but I wouldn't live there. I wouldn't live there, to be honest, but, but there's definitely opportunities to live in there. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go to the chat. Um, big up to everybody who's participating today, by the way. We have 55 persons, 55 persons on the live, 43 likes. Appreciate it, guys. Just hit that like button. We have, what, 27 more minutes to go because the lives are going to be restricted to just one hour these days, right? Of course, this is the launch of our AXA Canadian Immigrant Series where we get persons from the different provinces to come onto the platform every Sunday. We have a one-on-one -on -one and we compare all uh, the provinces so that you guys can have a clear idea of what province is better for you healthcare job opportunities pr opportunities um every single aspect that you can think about all right now somebody asked me a question earlier about um transportation in gp i i i did not first forget it i'm gonna answer that right now now transportation in gp is fairly accessible we have we have a public transit which is a bus system. Um, unfortunately, in the, in the winter time, the bus stop run, I think, seven or eight o'clock at night. And then in the summertime, spring and fall, it stop run probably midnight or 11 o'clock. Starts running at 5.30 in the morning. So anytime after the bus stop run, you have to call a cab. That is the bad thing about Grand Prairie. There's no train, no public passenger train because it's a small city and there's no um public taxi Every, all the taxi companies are private now you have a lot of different taxi companies you have um yellow cabs apple cabs 
U-Ride. Now, U-Ride would be something like an Uber kind of thing. So, you, you, transportation is fairly easy. But what is very convenient as well is that everybody and their dog has a car, right? It's very easy to get a car in Grand Prairie. Like, it's... Save on $2,500 or $3,000 and you can get a car off Kijiji. So that's the thing. That's a good thing. That's awesome. Jennifer says yes. Jennifer says medicine ad scrapped. <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to scrap medicine ad. Right? What you can do, um, I can point you in the direction of this um, YouTube. I'm going to put it in the chat right now. You guys can check check out that YouTube channel. Um, tell them that the Anderson sent you, and ask them whatever you need to know about medicine at right. They they live in medicine at, and they can tell you everything you need to know about medicine at before it's scrapped, right? So before you take it off your list, definitely, definitely, definitely chat with Mike and Rihanna, and find out if they can help you. You know, make a decision, more informed decision. Of course, I've never lived in medicine at. Tana Levy says, reason for me not coming to Alberta, the program I want to do is not offered there. And that's a problem a lot of persons have, right? The, the schools here are just um, becoming more open to other programs. Like, for example, Grand Prairie Regional College, where I went to, recently became a polytechnic last year, and now this is the first year they're actually offering, like, post-graduation certificate programs and stuff like that. So I totally understand the the... the, the the program choice or the program choices in, in, in Alberta is somewhat limited. I 100% understand. So Nina says, is it easy to get accommodation in GP like a one bedroom? Yes, it is. And you know why it's even more easy? Because you have the Anderson Settlement Services. <laughs> so if you're coming to Grand Prairie, I definitely offer settlement services where um, I get I find an apartment for you, I do airport pickup, I do a tour around the city, take you to get your documents, first grocery shopping, help you get your furniture, all of those lovely things that you need to transition. If you're coming to GP, consider everything taken care of, right? So getting a one bedroom in GP is not difficult. It's actually very easy. Actually very, very easy. There are constructions going up every day and housing is not a problem in Grand Prairie not a problem and that is one of the reasons why i think i haven't moved yet because like we are typically big city people and then we move to grand prairie and then that's a small town and then yeah we always feel the need to move back to a big city but then when you look on the cost of housing availability of housing we always revert back to probably next year <laughs> or other year kind of thing right so that's why we are always here because like yeah housing jobs stuff like that always on point can't wait to meet you guys. Can't wait to meet you too, Tadine Grant. Um, we are we are here. You know how it is, guys. We are here. We are located in Alberta, um, Grand Prairie. We rep for this province 100%, more so because this province gave us um, a start, gave us a platform, and yeah, we're just grateful. I was talking to somebody the other day through my calendar. If you guys don't know what my calendar is, you guys can definitely check that out. Um, oh, thank you so much for that super chat. Thank you so much for that for that super thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My, that, my, that's my first time getting some money off of one of these live, by the way. So I appreciate it. <laughs> we do this for the love, guys. We do this for the love. We don't do it for the money. But we appreciate the gift. Thank you. As I said, I was talking to somebody um, yesterday on my calendar and I was saying that first thing you want to do is to get here. Next thing you want to do is stay here. And then the third thing you want to do is to establish yourself here. So if you're in your beginning of your journey, of your Canadian journey, the first thing you should be doing is thinking about getting here, right? By the Okar by the crook. <laughs> If you're a student, to make sure that your student permit is put together the best you can. If you're thinking of working and want to make sure that everything is intact, whatever route, get here. Then after you get here, you want to make sure that you stay here. And by staying here, I mean that if you come as a student, you are going to be obeying all of your student immigration requirements. Same thing as a worker, same thing as a peer, whatever form you come here, you want to make sure that you stay here. 
And then the next thing you want to do is to establish yourself here. Now, establishing yourself here is where a lot of persons get it misconstrued. Establishing yourself here is doing what's best for you and yourself and your family. So if establishing yourself means moving to a small town, establishing yourself meaning moving into a big city, do what's best for yourself and your family because ultimately we leave our country to come to this country in order to, you know, to make it in life. And I always say it, we don't come here to farm food. We don't we can't do the same thing that, that born Canadians do. We don't have that luxury. We know what we're coming from and we know the opportunity that we've been given. So that is why we have to like be very, very, very careful of everything that we do and just make sure that we're doing the best we can. All right? I don't want to sound like I'm preaching to you guys, but it is what it is. Um, so Nina says, what is the um, rent range, please? For one bedroom, I can get a one bedroom from anywhere between $800 to like $1,100, dependent on the comfort and, you know, the quality and where it's located. And all of those lovely things will determine the price point. Now, two bedroom, you're looking at anywhere between $1,100 and it can go up to even $1,500. Depending on the prestige, depending on the location, depending on all of those things will determine the price point. But ultimately, that's the price range, right? Now, to give you an indication, like before, um, Nuts and I moved to where we're living right now. We lived in a five-bedroom house, two-bathroom, basement, all of that stuff. And we're only paying $1,650 for the month, right? Five-bedroom house, two-bathroom, $1,600 for the month? Really? Where else in Canada can you get that? Right? <laughs> Just to give an idea of what Grand Prairie is. Hi, will you be able to help someone move into Calgary? Unfortunately, no. I've gotten that question so many times. Um, th here's the thing. Now, to find an apartment electronically, we can do that. But we try not to do that because we like to look on the apartment ourselves. We want to vet it. We want to scrutinize it because we, if we are not going to be living there, we don't want anybody else to live there. So we try to keep in a range that is, you know, easily accessible. Now, Calgary is seven hours away from where we are living. And yeah, because of that, we can't necessarily go there to vet the apartment as though we'd want to vet it. And we don't want to look on virtual tours and stuff like that because virtual tours are usually done when the apartment building just open. It doesn't show you when somebody else has lived in there and wear and tear and stuff like that. So we don't like to take that for like, you know, as a basis point. We like to go there physically and look on it and, and see what it is like, right? So because of that, we, we generally stick within Grand Prairie. We do... um. Recently started doing Dawson Creek, which is in BC. That's just one and a half hours away. We do Edmonton because we're in Edmonton so often. And we don't even really do Edmonton either. We do Edmonton on a case-by-case -case basis, right? As I said, we like to do that one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. So because of that, we don't necessarily, we don't necessarily, um, you know, do that. But I do have um, connections, somebody who I work very closely with in, in Halifax, and Dartmouth in Nova Scotia. So because of that, we can do settlement services in Nova Scotia, actually, because we can get somebody to actually go and vet it, and we are sure that they're going to be vetting it the very same way that we would be vetting it, right? Okay, I'm just going through this chat. So Jillian says, hi, will you be able to help? Oh, same thing. From Namibia. Big up Namibia every single time. Big up all of the African brothers and sisters, Caribbean, Canadian, US. It doesn't matter where you're watching from, Ireland. Doesn't matter, guys. We appreciate all of you guys. We love you guys. Thank you guys for the love. Thank you guys for the support. If you're new here, guys, we, we went through comparing some provinces from my own experience, and that was just to kick off the AXA Canadian Immigrant Series, where we're going to be comparing the provinces by getting each person every week to come onto the platform and share every single thing that they can share about their province, right? Guys, we, there's 60 of you guys, there's 45 likes. If you haven't liked the live already, guys, please give the like a live. So what am I saying? Give the live a like, right? Only takes a second and I really appreciate it. We have been here for 45 minutes. We're only going for an hour. We only have 15 more minutes remaining. So if you have a question, throw it into the chat, all right, guys? Samantha says, oh my, I'm late. Hi, guys. Hi, Samantha. Ocean says, is it a flat fee for the settlement services or does it vary? It's a flat fee. It's a flat fee. It's a flat, flat, flat fee. 
And what that fee includes is um, usually finding an apartment, airport pickup if, if you want it, um, transportation to get all your documents sorted, like your bank account, i.e., you know, I can open that personally, by the way, your bank account, getting your phone service set up, transportation um, to or around the city so you can know where to find certain things, um, first grocery shopping, um, furniture shopping, all of those lovely things, one flat fee, right? Samantha says, what is your best advice for a newcomer landing a bank job? Hmm. Samantha, that's a very good question. And it's, it's a very good question because it's a question that I can relate to. Now, a newcomer landing a bank job, my, my, my first advice would be, don't be afraid to start from the bottom. Now, a lot of persons, um, because you've been working in a bank in your home country, you know, you've moved the ranks find it very difficult to go back to start from like a part-time teller or even a full-time teller but once you are in once you get into the banking space it's very easy to progress up so look at it as as a means to an end you start there so but you grow up very you grow very quickly so my advice would be don't be afraid to start over back from the bottom in terms of the the, the position right also just be confident you see a bank position advertising, if it's, ver if, it, if it's within your city, don't just send in your application and leave it right there. Sending your application is good, but take initiative. Go into the bank. Ask to talk to the branch manager. If the branch is close to you, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Damar. Um, you know what? I'm new here in Grand Prairie. Um, an international student, or you know what? I'm a PR, or whatever the case may be, and... I see you have a job posted available. I've already applied online, but I just thought I'd come in and introduce myself because I'm really interested in working here. Kind of thing, right? And then you do that, and usually that gives you success. So that would be my best suggestion or best advice. Okay, where am I now? Melissa says, establishing myself means moving to not restorators for PR. Lol. Exactly, but anything, anything you have to do, Anything you have to do, uh, Melissa, in order to give yourself the, the opportunity, right? If it means moving to the not restoratory, that's what you have to do. Go for it. Love, um, Lovey says, um, respect them, respect. Tana says, what about settlements in Ontario? Now, housing is way too hard to find in Ontario. And as, as, as I explained, I like to view myself. I like to see um, and stuff like that. I haven't been able to make that connection in Ontario yet where I can get somebody to go and vet it for me and stuff like that. But housing, housing is so difficult to find in Ontario. So hard. Guys, I'm not even, I'm, I'm, and when I say Ontario, I'm not generalizing the full province because there's a lot of places in Ontario that housing is easy to find. But those are the small towns where nobody now go. Right? <laughs> Most of you guys when you say Ontario Ontario, you're talking about you're talking about the the populated areas. And in those areas, housing is very, 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 very difficult. I can't I can't overemphasize that enough. <laughs> do you have any information on well and in Ontario? I do not, unfortunately. But as I said, somebody's gonna be coming on the on the on the live stream every week. Somebody who is from the respective province who would be able to speak a lot more about their province that I have than I am able to do. So stick and stay. We are definitely going to dive into all of it. I don't want to give any wrong information because, if, quite frank, I just don't know all the places in Canada, right? But we'll get, we'll get there. Is it safe for me to apply for an open work permit at the airport? I mean, I can't say if it's safe or not, but I can say that it's an option, <laughs> right? It is an option, but in terms of um, the, the pros and the cons and the risks that's attached to it, I can't really speak about that, right? That would be uh, a chance you would have to take and hope for the best. Now, there are persons who have done it successfully. Lots of persons have done it successfully, but I can't say if it's safe or not, unfortunately. Do you find housing in Lethbridge? I'm scared. Oh man, she's scared. Um, Alia, um, Lethbridge, 
Unfortunately, no, because Lethbridge is all the way past Calgary. And if if it is that I don't do it in Calgary, I can't do it in Lethbridge. Because Lethbridge is further away from me than Calgary. Lethbridge, Lethbridge is, is 45 minutes away from the U.S. border. <laughs> That's how far Lethbridge is. So, unfortunately, I don't do it um, right now. Um, Sanik, um, is it Saniki or... Sanikai, I'm not sure. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. What I, what I would say um, you could do is just prepare as best as possible. Now, if it's an option to apply before getting there, I think you should. Um, but I was about to say part of the former program. That's why I'm asking. I think you can try, but I know that you are able to get it if your if your spouse is on a farm work program. I know that the, the immigration has expanded um, the, the laws a little bit so that spouse and family members of, of farm workers can get an open work permit. In terms of the process, that's what I'm not clear about. So I'd say um, do some research, but I know that it's a possibility that you can do it at the border. But just be positive, be positive and just go for it. How soon before arriving in Canada do you suggest to start searching for accommodations? It depends on where you're going, my friend. If you're going to Ontario, if you're going to a populated area in Ontario, I suggest at least six months or, well, between four or three months for sure. But you start sowing the seed between six months because that's how hard it is. If you're coming to Ant um, Alberta, probably a month because it don't take long. Um, so it depends on where you're going. So you want to, um, oh, another tip I can give you guys is this. And this is something that um, somebody told me about as well. So if you're going to a particular city, right, what you can do, you can join that city's Facebook page. Like, for example, the Grand Prairie Facebook page, City of Grand Prairie Facebook page, and make a post. Make a post that says, hey, guys, I'm coming to Grand Prairie in the next month or in the next two months, and I'm wondering where would be the best place for me to live or does anyone have any suggestion or availability for housing and that usually gives you a lot of um i'd say connections somebody i know someone who did it and it worked for them so just join the facebook group before put it out there that you're going there and you probably get um links that is not necessarily available otherwise right but it depends on where you're going just gauge the population gauge the the housing availability and then let that be a decision. Don't wait until two weeks, though, regardless. Don't wait until two weeks because you don't know if it's going to be difficult or if it's going to be hard to find. So just be proactive. Just be proactive and, you know, definitely go for it. So, guys, we have five more minutes, roughly, to, to chat a little bit. It's now 52, um, 53 minutes we've been on the live. Um, of course, we're not going to go over one hour. Can you change a visitor visa to work permit visa? Yes, you can. You can, but you have to get an LMIA job. Once you're in Canada and a visitor's visa, but the thing is you have to be in Canada, and you have to get an LMIA job, and once you get the job offer, you can use that to apply for a work permit. Right? But, but that is all dependent on you getting that LMIA job. Right? Guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I'll take the second just to ask you guys just to hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Guys, if you are here and you haven't liked the live yet, please take a second and like the live. I truly appreciate it. Um, all the persons who have been supporting, I really love and appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For that super, th um, super thanks that I got, thank you so much. That's my first time ever getting a super thanks or a super chat or something like that so i really really appreciate it now you're gonna be a you're gonna go down in history the first person to give um the andersons a super chat or a super thanks thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you i really really appreciate it i'm just taking a second to say i appreciate it thank you thank you thank you now jennifer says how long does that process take to get to narquest narquest is easy as a matter of fact, the last settlement services that I did is Narquest, the person went to. Now, to get into Narquest might be a month, a month and a half, depending on the program. But to transition into Edmonton, I'm your guy. Come on now. Come on now. Definitely, that's something that I can help with personally. And Narquest is very, it's growing in popularity. 
put it that way. A lot of lot more persons are interested in her quest in comparison to expensive Nate, where a lot of persons used to be interested in her, and then them realized that Nate is charging a harm and a leg. Hopefully now Nate dropped them school fee. But yeah, Narquist is a great, great, great um, place to explore. Can't believe it has been one hour already. Exactly. One hour, not enough them. Come on now. Come on now. One hour. One hour is all I can spare, guys. One hour is all I can spare. Uh, we have five more minutes, though. So if you have a question, guys, you can you can throw it into the chat. And we can chat some more. But, yeah, we have to do it for one hour. Because, especially because we're going to be getting persons on the platform. We don't want to keep them for too longer than one hour because they'll be spending, um, you know, they'll be spending a part of their Sunday with us. So I appreciate it. My daughter will be adding there. We'll get in contact soon. Thanks. I appreciate No, nope, I appreciate you, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Just reach out to me and we can definitely chat a little bit more. Does all program requests, i.e. LTS? No. As a matter of fact, if you're from Jamaica, you don't even need an English test to get into the college, right? You only need an English test when it's time for PR, right? So you don't need an, an English test if you're from Jamaica or most other Caribbean countries um, in terms of the program, right? The IELTS is really a federal expectation for permanent residency, not the college, not the permit, not the visa kind of thing. So bear that in mind. Okay? It's an absolute pleasure, guys. Like, one hour has flown by. I can't believe it's one hour already, honestly, because I feel like I just started talking to you guys. Like, I've been here now. I sat down like, for probably 15 minutes now, and I looked up, and it's like almost one hour, right? Appreciate you guys. Appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. Now, of course, smash that like button before you leave. Um, before you get out of the live, just take a second and click that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet subscribed. And watch some other video. <laughs> Thanks for being there. Oh, absolutely, man. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys. Hope everybody having a fantastic Sunday. Um, more blessings to you and the fam. Thank you so much. Um, no, question. Just big up um, them. Your video helped me so much. I landed in Canada. My wife and kids come in this week. We really appreciate you. Yeah, win. Bless up yourself. Bless up, bless up, bless up, man. Those are the things I like to hear. I like to hear when time people get through. It's like it's like it's like you just put me into a different um I'd say space. Like I'm really happy for you guys when you get through. Like honestly, genuinely, sincerely, because Canada changed my life, and because Canada changed my life, I know that you guys getting through. You guys are one step closer to the dream. Literally, you guys are one step closer to the dream. So I literally feel it to my heart when we see somebody get through to come to Canada, even as a visitor. Yo, if I'm not telling about for enough, but if I was still like, if it was me back in the day and get a message, Jamaica, I see me back. But, anyways, you never hear that from me. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, then. Um, of course, every time um, Colleen says, God bless you on the farm. Thank you, Joel says. Thanks for the info, them. Enough blessings. Shani says, lol. Guys, it is what it is, guys. You just have to take a chance, yeah, man. You understand? You just have to make a, um, a decision. Is it. Is it that is it that the hook by the crook? Is the worst that can happen is it don't work out, but at least you try, right? That's what it is. Can someone make an appeal when you refuse a visa? There you there is a process you can go through to appeal it. Uh, you can even ask for a reconsideration. Thanks, Thames. Looking forward to the series. Thank you guys so much for being here. Is the settlement service refunded if no apartment is found? Actually, it's you don't pay in full up front. You pay 50% up front. And then when everything is con confirmed, you pay the difference. But, yeah, we don't fail. There's no failure over here, by the way. If we, if we talk to you and you tell us that you're going somewhere, you will find an apartment. That's why we don't do it in every place. We do it where we're sure about, right? We don't do it in places that we are 50-50 about. We do it in places that we are 100% sure about. So if it is that you're coming to any place that we offer settlement services, just leave it with it, you're good, right? But we don't take on places that we're not sure about. So for that reason, yeah, we have one hundred a one hundred percent success rate. One hundred percent. Not ninety-nine, one hundred percent success rate. But it's up to you by the way, because ultimately it's 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 your transition. So if you want your transition to do it on your own, that's fine too. But if you need help, we are here to do it for you as well. Bless up and looking forward to the series. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you guys. Smash the like button before you leave, by the way. I keep saying it. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. 
appreciate it. I'm just waiting if there's any last minute question. But other than that, hope everybody have a fantastic Sunday. Enjoy your week. Good news is coming. Don't give up on your dream. Keep pushing. Keep striving. Keep believing. All right, guys? See you guys in the next video, which is going to be dropped in the next two minutes as well. So make sure to watch that video as well. All right, guys? See you guys next week Sunday.